How y'all doing, good people? I appreciate y'all tapping in, joining uh, this live stream. Certainly appreciate y'all that will watch the video when it comes out. Today, man, I wanna really get into some information that I think is uh, gonna be quite beneficial to those of you that are trying to build wealth. Um, those of you who have made the decision that you know something, I'm tired of being broke, I'm tired of being poor. And um, I think if you listen and then you, you, you learn something and then if you take action, then there's no reason why you can't achieve whatever you want to achieve financially, right? But before we jump into the main topic in the video today, let me ask you guys to, to hit the thumbs up button. Um, hit that like button as soon as you come into the video, as soon as you come into the, the live stream, hit the like button. It's extremely important that we do that so that we can get this YouTube algorithm to spread this content out to more folks. So please do me a huge, huge, huge favor. Hit that like button. Smash it really, really hard. Um, like I said, we want to grow this community and the only way we can grow the community is is we got to get youtube to spread the content out to more folks the only way youtube will spread this content out to more folks is you got to hit the like button so please if you appreciate the content if you appreciate the daily grind uh that i love doing trust me i love doing these videos i love doing the live streams but if you appreciate the daily grind that daily financial grind to get this financial education out Hit the thumbs up for me. Please do that. I really, 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 really would appreciate it. Also, if you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account. Put any amount of money in that brokerage account. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Click on that Weeble link open up your new Weeble account today and go get that free stock, go get that free money. I'm gonna also send you a Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade, to buy your first ETF, to buy your first individual stock so that you can be on your way to building wealth. All you gotta do is DM me on Instagram at richardfain28. Let me know that you've opened the Weeble account, that you have funded the Weeble account. You gotta put some money in there, guys. No sense of opening the Weeble account if you're not gonna put some money in there to start building wealth. The whole point of having a brokerage account is to be able to have a way to buy paper assets, ETFs, individual stocks to build your wealth. So if you're interested in that, like I said, just, just open the Weeble account. Like I said, the link's down in the description box. Click on that link, open up the Weeble account, and then send me a DM on Instagram at richardfain 28 and let me know you've done that. And I'm gonna send you that Weeble tutorial video to make it really simple and easy for you to start using the Weeble app to build wealth. Once more, guys, hit the thumbs up button as you come into the live stream or the video hit the thumbs up, hit the like button. Extremely important that we get these likes up so that we can get YouTube's algorithm to spread this content out to more people. Like I said, if you appreciate the daily financial grind, putting out this content for you guys to grab nuggets and tips so that you can build your wealth, the way you think me is hitting the like button. So please hit that like button a thousand times if you don't mind, I appreciate it. Now let's move on into today's topic today's discussion and that's going to be this is why so many americans are broke and poor let's talk about that let's 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 break that down a little bit because a lot of people in this country are broke and poor they just are and, and that doesn't that doesn't mean it's just poor people that doesn't mean it's just middle class people but, but there are a lot of poor people in this country and there are reasons why these people are poor. See, poor to me, I'm talking about from a financial standpoint, right? When I, when I talk about poor people, when I talk about 
middle income people, when I talk about rich or wealthy people, I'm just talking about those three categories of people from a financial standpoint. I'm not talking about are they a good person or a bad person and oh, they were born with a... I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about poor, middle class, rich and wealthy. I'm talking about in a financial sense. I'm talking about from the financial decisions people have made. So I, I just want to make sure I'm clear on that because I don't want people thinking, oh, poor... No, I'm talking about from a financial standpoint, you fall into these three categories, whether you, whether you like it or not, you fall into the three categories, poor and what I call middle income or middle class. And then you got your rich and wealthy folks, the one percenters. What, what, what separates these three financial groups of people? What, what separates them? And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. I think these are some things that separate these three financial classes of people, right? Again, doesn't mean any of those people are bad or good, or I'm just talking strictly from a financial standpoint. So the stuff that poor people, poor people from a financial standpoint do, Here's the stuff that they do. Payday loans. See, people with poor financial decisions have no choice but to turn to payday lenders in order to help take care of their lifestyle. Right? Now, of course, you know payday lenders are really predatory lenders. And all that means is they charge you as much interest as they can charge you, as many fees as they can charge you, and they don't care anything about your financial situation. They will take your last penny. That's a, that's a payday loan, payday lender, right? They're predatory. But a lot of people who are poor financially use these types of places to transact financial business even though they're getting charged three, four hundred percent more than what they actually borrow when it comes to interest, right? Another thing you look at that poor financial decisions people make are title loans, right? Again, you're paying somebody a, a predatory interest rate <laughs> because you have made poor financial decisions. They also tend to go to places like a buy here, pay here, and they call them hold the title type of lenders, right? Guess what guys, normally with these places, they're gonna charge you more than what a bank would charge you to borrow money. 78% of people that buy lottery tickets are, are they live in what, poor zip codes. So that's another financial characteristic of a poor financial thinking person. They go out and buy lottery tickets. Why do they buy lottery tickets? Because they believe they really have a chance of winning. When, when statistics tell us there is a 300 million to one are the odds of you winning the lottery. Any significant amount of money, right? You're, you're, you're more likely to get struck by lightning twice in the same spot than win the lottery. But what, once again, though, poor financial thinking. They're thinking, I really got a chance of winning this thing. So let me go down here and play. That's why 78% of lottery tickets sold are in poor zip codes because that's poor people thinking they're thinking i really can win this when there is no chance in hell you're gonna win the lottery it's 300 million to one odds guys poor people thinking right here's another thing poor people thinking i'm gonna rent to own my washer and dryer i'm gonna rent to own my furniture 
I'm going to rent to own everything in my home. Poor people thinking. Why would you rent to own? You're paying these people who you're renting this washer and dryer, this refrigerator, this stove, this couch, this TV. Do you understand the amount of money you're paying these people for something you don't own? You never stop paying it. You never own it. <laughs> Basically, right? This rent to own thing, you, when, you, when you finally do own it, guess what? It'll be five years from now. It'll be damn near obsolete. It may not even be working. So be careful with the poor people thinking. Let's move on to middle income folks. What do, how do middle income folks think when it comes down to finances? Their financial moves that they make. So, so middle income people do what? They borrow a lot of money, man. They borrow till they can't borrow no more. They borrow for the car, right? They borrow for the truck. They borrow for the boat. They borrow for the jet skis. They borrow and borrow and borrow because guess what? They can't afford to actually buy anything outright, but they do get a decent check. So they take every last penny of that decent check and they buy stuff because guess what? That stuff to them makes them feel like they're doing great. We're living a comfortable, a great life. But everything they own, they've had to borrow money to get it. So really they own nothing but a bunch of payments. Also, what middle income folks, one of the financial characteristics of those folks is student loans. Now, there are some poor thinking folks, lower income folks that have student loans too. But the majority of your student loans are going to come from people who are considered... Middle class, middle income earners. So they had a lot of student loan debt. Went to college, got some degree, and that degree has given them the opportunity to do what? Make a middle income salary. But in order to get that middle income salary, some folks have to go 60, 70, 80, 100K in debt from a student loan standpoint to get a job that's going to pay them $50,000 a year. $60,000 a year. To me, that just don't add up. I'm going to go out and get sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 in student loans, but I'm only going to make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year. And really, I don't make that because that's, that's what? Gross. When you talk about net, it ain't even $70,000, right? Uncle Sam going to get 25%. Then you got your benefits taken out. By the time you look around, that, that seventy k you make, you're probably taking about forty k home. 45k home if you're lucky but you still got 60 70 80 hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt so that's one of the financial characteristics or financial stuff that these middle class folks find themselves in a lot of loans with debt right a lot of loans because they got to go buy the nice car they got to have the nice house Obviously, we got to throw some toys in there because we, our neighbors got toys. All of our friends got toys. So we got to throw some toys. Now, we ain't making enough money to pay all this stuff cash. So we got to go out and leverage through loans. And they find themselves living paycheck to paycheck. That's why 61% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And the majority of that 61% are middle class folks. So we talked a little bit about poor, poor financial spending habits, financial habits. We talked about middle class spending and financial habits. All that does, guys, is, is put people in a situation where they can't do what? They can't build wealth. And I've already told you, if you ain't got no wealth, you ain't got nothing when it comes to your financial freedom. You ain't got nothing when it comes to your time. You got nothing when it comes to choices in your life. See, these poor thinking folks and these middle income earners and these middle income financial thinking folks, 
they do what with all their resources, their financial resources? See, poor folks spend all their financial resources on, on things that they believe they have no other option. See, payday loans, title loans, tote the note loans, lottery purchases, you know, renting to own furniture and appliances. They do all of that because of what? Financial decisions that they made. Now, I know some of you will say, well, hey, man, some people can't help that. Well, guys, listen to me. I just disagree with that. I disagree with that. If you got sound mind, sound body, and you're able to get out here and create income, then you can change that. Poor thinking people, poor low income people can change that. When you look at middle income people who, who, who really work to impress other people, and the reason I say they work to impress other people is because they take all of their money and they buy stuff to, to, to let, to, so that people can think that they're doing well. And you know what that's called? That's called pride. See, that's pride. Yeah. See, those are, you got three, three financial killers. Three financial killers. The first one is pride. The second one is greed. And the third one is fear. These are the three things that kill, kill the financial ability of low income people, poor people, and middle income, middle class people. Those are the three things that typically keep them and hold them back. If you think about poor folks, what are the three of those financial killers that really hit poor folks? Fear. Fear is the biggest obstacle low income or poor people have to have obstacle that they have to jump over financially is their fear. That's the reason they, they won't go open to traditional bank account. Ah, my people ain't never used no bank. I'm going to keep my money where I can see it. I don't believe in banks. Banks are banks going to steal your money. That's fear, guys. That's fear. I, I, I got no other option, so I'm going to spend $20, $30, $40 a week on lottery tickets because that, that's my come up. That's the only way I'm going to come up. So I'm going to spend that $30, $40. At some point, I'm going to hit it. God told me I'm going to hit it. God gave me a sign that I'm going to hit it. All of that's fear. All of that's fear, right? And then, and then let's talk about the third financial class of people, which are your rich and your wealthy. Here's the situation with these folks, see? See, these folks have figured out the way to true freedom is through assets. They figured out that, you know something? Instead of me graduating college and going out and getting this Mac Daddy car, right? Instead of me doing that, I'm gonna continue to drive that old college beater that I drove coming out of college. You know something? You know something out of high school, instead of me getting a, 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 a good job and, 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 and going and just getting in a bunch of debt, uh-uh. I'm gonna continue to ride the bicycle to my job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to take public transportation to my job because every little dollar that I earn, even though I'm only making about 30,000, guess what? I, I'm gonna live on half of that 30. So that means if I got to get a roommate, if I got to rent one little cubby hole somewhere, I'm going to rent it. If that means I got to ride my bicycle every day to work or walk, that's what I'm going to do. Because I know in 10 years, if I just keep my head down, keep earning, keep investing in 10 years, you know, I, I, I'm 22 today. But in, by the time I'm 32, if I keep my head down and, and delay some gratification and keep grinding, and don't spend my money to make other people wealthy in 10 years. In 10 years, I'm gonna have a half a million or a million dollar net worth. Because guess what? This money that I'm putting in these investments, it's gonna multiply itself. And guess what? I'm not gonna stop there. In my free time, I'm gonna develop some side hustles. 
while all my buddies out partying, chasing women or women chasing men or however, wherever you fall in. Instead of me doing that, uh-uh, I'm going to be working on side hustles. Not only am I going to have that nine to five, not only am I going to be trying to start me a little business, I'm going to also be doing some other stuff on the side. You know what I'm going to do on the weekends? I'm going to go ahead on the weekends and I'm going to put me an ad in Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace and let people know if they got old garbage and, 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 and stuff they want towed away from their house, guess what? They can hire me. I'll come do it. $50 a trip. Let me go do this on the weekends. And then I'm going to take all that weekend money and I'm going to dump it in an S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. And I'm just going to just do that for, for, for 10 years. That's the key, man. That's how these rich people think. That's how these wealthy people have gotten to where they're at, guys, through assets. Taking their hard-earned money. Not being afraid. Not being prideful. And just dumping it into investments that multiply it. See, they'd rather drive a 10-year-old beater around than to go out and get themselves in a, uh, uh, in a, in a, in a $40,000, $50,000 car that they got to go get a note on and got to have a six, $700 a month payment. See, that's the thing that separates your wealthy. Now, I'm talking about self-made wealthy. I'm not, I'm not talking about people who, who, who inherited wealth, who don't know anything about hard work. I ain't talking about dumb people. I'm talking about your self-made millionaires out here, guys. These self-made millionaires, they delay gratification. Right? They delay gratification. They gave up something financially today so that they could have everything they want financially tomorrow. They gave up something. A lot of our low-income, middle-income folks, like I told you, the things that hold them back, the biggest thing that holds them back. Low income people, poor people is fear. Middle class income earners is pride. Why? Because they want everybody to think they're doing better than they're really doing. I see it every day, guys. I see it every single day as I'm going to wherever I'm going. Like I go pick my daughter up from school. She goes to a private school. I see it all the time. So, so, so. I know exactly what people are going through. Those are your three classes of people, though. And now the thing that may affect that, that last financial killer that affects people. And a lot of times this will affect your wealthy. Is greed. Sometimes your wealthy folks. They are greedy. And that's something that they really have to watch themselves when it comes to greed. Because see what happens with greed is, especially with money, money becomes your primary objective. You will do whatever and whenever for money. And sometimes your rich, your rich and your wealthy will fall into that trap. But those are your three financial killers. Greed, pride, and fear. And I told you which financial class of people those three go with poor folks fear keeps them back nobody never taught me anything about finance i'm scared i, I don't want to invest in the stock market i don't know nothing about the stock market i'm scared i i i, I don't know it uh-uh I, I can't i can't do it i won't do it i'm not gonna buy that rental property because number one i ain't got the money number two i don't i i, I don't know nothing about real estate just fear. Oh, I'm going to go get that $40, $50 worth of lottery, a lottery tickets every week because uh, guess what? That's my only hope. I got no other, no other way of getting the freedom. I got no other way of hitting my lick. I got to go ahead and spend that $30, $40 on these lottery tickets. When no one, if you knew the statistics, you know it was just money you're throwing away. There's no way. No way you're going to hit the lottery. Not at $300 million to one odds. No way, guys. But that's fear. And like I told you, your middle income folks, it's just pride, man. It's just keeping up with the Joneses. I can't let nobody know what's really going on behind these closed doors at my house. We are up to our eyeballs in debt. We live on more than what we make. Our credit cards are maxed out.
but yet and still, we cannot let people know that. That's pride, guys. You won't change your financial situation because you're worried about what somebody going to think about you. That's pride. And that pride going to keep you broke and keep you poor. Same thing with poor folks. That fear going to keep you broke and keep you poor. Mindset, guys. And then for these rich and wealthy folks, they got to be careful. Because guess what? Money ain't going to make you happy. So if you put money first, everything else last, you will not be happy. I can guarantee you that. I don't care how much money you got. Money will not make you happy. Money is to be used as a tool to get more of what? More freedom, more time, and more choices. That's what money is to be used for. And that's it. If I use money as a tool, no matter what financial class of people I'm in, if I use money as a tool to get something that is very important to me, then I'm doing much better. But I can't look at money as, oh, give me this million dollars and that's going to solve all my problems. No, if you got problems at one dollar, you're going to still have them same problems at a million dollars in most cases. You're just going to have a little more money. But you still have the same problems, right? If you, if you got financial poor behaviors with money at a dollar, you're going to have financial poor behaviors with money at a million dollars. You just are. It's about financial behaviors, guys. That's what separates these three financial classes of people is, is behaviors, right? It's behaviors, the question for you today is, which class do you fall in? Which financial class of people do you fall in? Poor? Middle? Rich and wealthy? Where are you at? Statistics tell me 99% of us are in that poor and middle. 1%. Are in that rich and wealthy financial class of people. Why is that? Programming. Some of us come from low income, poor financial backgrounds. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. I was raised in really, really, really humble beginnings. Single parent household, mom probably, at, my mom probably never made over $30,000 in her life, in a job, never. That was, but, but, but you know something? Other things she instilled in us, especially me, helped me change that for myself though. So she sacrificed a lot. for us to have more. And I really appreciate that from her. But I knew I didn't want to follow in her financial footsteps. And I knew I had to do something if I wanted to get out of those financial footsteps. So guess what I started doing? Reprogramming myself. Reprogramming the filter system, which is my brain. Just reprogramming it. Don't be afraid, Richard. There's nothing to be afraid about. You got to listen. If you want reward, you got to take some risks. If you want reward. See, there ain't no reward without risk. I'm just going to wake up one morning and poof, there's a million dollars in my in my mailbox. No, that ain't how it work. You're going to have to go out there and risk something in order to get something. See, any reward, there's a risk associated with it. Right. So you got to figure out if you're comfortable taking that risk. I was comfortable taking that risk, even though I come out of background of financial fear, I wasn't going to let fear keep me from my financial destiny. I wasn't going to let fear keep me from financial freedom. And then the next one, as I, as I, as I worked past that poor financial thinking mentality, I moved myself into that middle class mentality, right? I move myself in that middle class income earning trap. 
But guess what I said, though? Uh-uh. I know that trap. I know that trap. I'm not falling into that pride trap. No, 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 no. I'm not going to try to keep up with the Joneses. I don't care what these people think. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, taking my little $30,000 a year salary that I was making at the time, and I said, I'm going to live on half. And I'm going to take half, and I'm going to put in something to multiply it. So I started taking $150, $300 a month and putting it in the company-sponsored 401k program. Because, see, I'm trying to get my mentality like these folks that are already wealthy, like these clients I'm working with. Because when I talked with them, that's what they told me they did. Oh, we started small, investing, multiplying money, and then it grew. So that's what I started doing. I was like, I ain't falling into that pride trap. No siree, not falling into it. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a little piece of this money, and I'm going to stick it in something to multiply it. And then what I'm going to do is get my little credit right so I can go get me an investment property. See, I ain't got no problem with folks having debt as long as it's not consumer debt. I ain't got a problem with you having debt that actually you've used to buy an asset that produces income. Nothing wrong with that. I did it for years and I still do do it. The problem with debt is when I take my hard earned money and I spend it on things that do not create income, that's bad. That's pride. That's pride. You got to get out of that. Nothing wrong with having debt if the debt actually was used to purchase an asset that generates income that pays for itself. And then increases in value every year. That's what real estate does. That's what single family homes, multi-family homes do. That's what I did. So I said, no, I'm not falling into that pride trap, trying to keep up with my colleagues. Yep, they go out and buy a new Beamer. I got to go stretch myself and be broke and poor and not investing to, 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 so I can prove to them that I'm doing well. It's a pride trap, man. That's that middle class financial thinking trap. You got to get yourself out of that. The way I did it was I just kept my eyes on the prize. I didn't look left or right. I just kept my eyes straight ahead on the prize. And the prize was what? Freedom. Guys, if you're coming in the, in the live, hit that, that, that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Hit the like button. Let's get these likes up. The only way YouTube spreads this content out to more people, guys, is if we, if we can show that people are liking the content. So do me a big favor. If you, if you appreciate the content, hit that like button for me as you come in. Just hit it, tap it. I really would appreciate it. That, that gives this YouTube algorithm the information it needs to spread this content out to more people so that we can help more people get to their financial freedom. And really, go, guys, that's my goal here. My goal is to help people get to their freedom by giving them financial tidbits, financial nuggets, financial information that they can then use and potentially change something in their life. If there's people in this call, right, on this live uh, that are falling into these three financial categories, which we all do. Now, whether you want to admit it or not, or you want to lie to yourself and fool yourself and all that, that's on you. But you're going to fall into either low income, you're going to fall into middle income, or you're going to be at your freedom. That them three classes. There, there ain't no more. Oh, I'm at, I'm at the low income because somebody did something. See, there you go. Can't, we can't make excuses because we're in, we're in a, 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 a financial class that we don't want to be in. The best thing to do is take ownership of it and figure out, okay, how do I get out of here? Don't be, don't be blaming nobody else. Don't be worried about nobody else. You get out of it. Nobody puts you there. You put you there. So if you're not happy with where you're at, do something about it. This is the thing that really, 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 really gets me going when I talk to people. If, listen, you can get yourself out of this if you want to. Stop making excuses. So if you're in that low income class, if you're in that middle income class and, and you're trying to get yourself, see, the goal should get yourself to wealth so you can be free. That should be the, that should be the primary goal for all of us. All of us should be trying to get to, to wealth. But I'm going to tell you something. You ain't going to get the wealth out here making excuses and blaming other folks. You can't get the wealth like that. Go talk to anybody that has built wealth and is at freedom right now. I guarantee you they won't tell you anything about excuses of other people. No. 
They're going to tell you, hey, this is what I did. Yeah, I fell down a few times, but I got back up. And I learned from them mistakes. Didn't repeat them. Yep, yep, early on, I started out as middle, middle income. Yeah, I was a little prideful, out buying all this stuff to make other people wealthy. But I reprogrammed myself. I reprogrammed the way I think. And now I'm on the path of freedom. Five years, I'm free. Here are my assets. Portfolio in the stock market. Got me a, a portfolio of real estate. Man, I even started me a business that's throwing off all kind of cash. And I'm multiplying that cash. Five, ten years, I'm free. Now I'm able to do anything I want to do when I want to do it, and I don't have to worry about nobody telling me I can't do it because I got to come to work. Or threatening me if I don't come to work, they're not going to pay me. Listen, man, this thing is real out here. You can sugarcoat it, you can hide from it, but it's real. It's real. And unless we take this thing seriously, and when I say take it seriously, I mean take action. Do something about your situation. You ain't got to stay where you're at. That's the thing I don't get. You know, we don't have to stay low income. We don't have to stay middle income. But you do have to change some financial things in your life in order to get out of those two. Ultimately, you need to be in the wealth financial class. That's where we need to be. We need to be where we got a couple million dollars where we can get $120,000 a year worth of income off of it. That's where you should want to end up. At le least for me, that was my goal. My goal was to end up where I'm getting over a six-figure income just for my investments. That's the goal, right? The goal is to be financially free. For some of y'all, financially free is $5,000 a month being generated from your investments. Some of you need 10. It depends on your lifestyle, but you build your assets to throw off enough income, whatever lifestyle you choose to have when you don't want to trade time for money anymore. But unless you do that, unless you, 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 you figure that out, listen, man, you're fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself. And I'm going to ask you one more time. What category do you fall in? What financial category or class do you fall in? And again, this ain't got nothing to do with if you're a good person or a bad person. Oh, I, I, all this stuff happened to me in the past. That's why I'm here. No, nope, that not, that's not what we're talking about. We want solutions. Solutions are, yeah, here's where I'm at, Richard, but guess what? This is what I'm getting ready to do to get myself out of it. See, that's where, that's where, that's where you start reprogramming. That's where we need to be. Not, well, I'm in the low income, I'm in the poor class, because, but, you know, it's because this and because that and because this and because that. Well, I'm in the middle class, but, yeah, it's because this. No, no, no. Nobody don't want to hear any of your excuses. What, what you should be saying to yourself is, is, this is what I'm getting ready to do to get out of it. Because I know if I change some of these financial behaviors that I'm currently doing, if I change them, I got a shot to get myself where I want to be, which is freedom. That's where you should be thinking and that's what you should be talking about. That's, that's where the reprogramming comes in. That's where the reprogramming comes in. Like I said, you know, the three financial killers, right? Fear, greed, pride. We got to let those three things go and exchange them for what? Three financial winners. Right? Discipline, consistency, and patience. So, so let's, let's exchange those and get rid of those financial three killers. Get rid of those three behaviors. Adapt some new behaviors. Right? Let's get rid of, like I said, greed. Let's get rid of fear. And let's get rid of pride. And, and, and trade them out for discipline, consistency, and patience. That's the winning formula, guys, to build wealth and get the freedom. Those three things. But so many of us want to stay wallowing in pride and fear and greed. We just, we just, we just wallow in that stuff. Because it doesn't take much we don't have to change much we don't have to push ourselves as much when we adopt those three behaviors right 
See, we ain't got to push ourselves to do any better than what we do it now with them three. We don't, not really. But if we, we switch them out for discipline, patience, and consistency, see, that takes some work. That takes some changing. You got to change something up here to make them three work. Them other three, mm, you just do it all, whatever you've been doing and stay in them three. But if you want to change to them new three, it takes some work. It takes some work. But you can do it. And that's the whole key here, guys. You know, I, 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 I just want you guys to understand that you can, you can have anything you want, man. I, I, I tell you guys all the time, I, I, I was no different than a lot of you guys. I, I wasn't. I just, I just made a decision at 26 years old that I was going to change that. And I just started taking little baby steps. It didn't happen overnight. I still I fell off the wagon. But I got, got myself back in the wagon and kept moving. Every now and then when I was coming through trying to change my financial class, I fell off the, I fell off the turnip truck a couple times. But guess what? I dust myself off, made sure that I wasn't going to make that, 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 that last bad decision again. And then guess what happened, though? As my... As my consistency in my discipline got better and my patience got better my financial situation got better I just kept climbing I kept my my eye on the prize freedom 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 that's all I thought about freedom Richard it's either freedom or you're gonna work for somebody for the rest of your life those are your choices see that's how I, I talk to myself see, I don't know oh, you know my mom she didn't she didn't have you know a college education and my grandparents didn't either, and, you know, nobody in my family. No, I didn't know. I didn't do all that. I just said, you know something? Whatever I don't know, I'm going to learn. But I'm going to learn through doing. I'm not going to sit around here and try to read every book in America on, on financial success. Oh, I got a whole library of books from, on financial success. But ain't done nothing. Ain't took one action step to change anything in your life. But if you got every financial book on YouTube, Every financial book in, 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 in Barnes & Noble, you got it. But I ain't took one step towards getting to freedom, which is insane to me. Right? What does that go back to, though? Fear. See, anytime I hear somebody talk about all this stuff that they bought and purchased in the pursuit of freedom, but they actually ain't never done nothing, that's just fear. That's, that's, that's that. And, and, and who's... Primary mentality is that, that that's poor financial decision people thinking. That's poor people financial. That's what that is. And again, guys, poor does not mean a characteristic of somebody or someone's bad or good. Poor financial thinking means I'm at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to income. I'm at the bottom of the financial totem pole when it comes to uh, financial freedom. I'm at the bottom. I got nothing. That's what that means. It got nothing to do with whatever some people may try to in infer. I'm telling you what I mean by that. It's just financial thinking. Fear. Don't let fear win, man. Don't let fear win. Guys, if you're coming in the live, please hit the thumbs up for me. I really would appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel and it helps me. It will help the YouTube algorithm pick the content up and throw it out to more people if you hit the thumbs up to let the algorithm know you like the content. You don't have to agree with everything that I say, guys. But if you're stopping by, tapping in, trying to pick up nuggets here and there, please hit the thumbs up for me. That's, that's the way this video will get out to more people. We can better our community and get this message out. And you know that's my main goal here is to get the message out. So if you don't mind, can hit the thumbs up for me as you tap in or before you tap out. I get it. People got things to do. They can't stay for the whole live, and that's okay. I get it. But if you're in here, I don't care if it's for 30 seconds or 30 minutes, hit the thumbs up for me. I really would appreciate it. So now let's wrap this thing up, and then I'm going to let you guys go on with your day, and I'm going to go on with my day. For some of y'all that's coming in this thing late, I was talking about three financial classes of people. Poor, middle income, and rich and wealthy. 
And I was saying some of the behaviors associated with these classes of people are fear, greed, and pride. And I also said that poor financial thinking people tend to fall into that fear category. They're afraid to, to, to climb out of their financial hole that they're in. They're just, they're just flat out afraid, right? It's fear keeping them where they're at. And really that's it. It's not financial literacy. It's not opportunity. It's, it's just fear. They're just scared. They're scared to, to, to leave this, this comfort zone that they found themselves in, even though that comfort zone is keeping them broken poor and under the thumb of someone else who, who pays them a paycheck. But there's still fear of, associated with that and it's keeping them where they're at. And then these middle income folks, their whole thing is this pride. They want to show the world how successful they are. So they go out and they get a bunch of debt. All right? They get a bunch of debt. They go buy a house that's too big for them, too, too expensive. They go buy all these fancy cars that's, you know, wife got an SUV, husband got a sports car, you know, they got to get a, they got to go get the boat too because, you know, the neighbors got the boat or some of their friends got the boat, but they can't pay for any of this stuff cash. So all of it is leveraged on debt, right? Consumer debt, except the house. The only thing I don't really like about when someone buys a house is they buy too much house and it's unnecessary. But middle class, middle income folks tend to do that, right? Plus they have a bunch of student loan debt in most cases. So they want the outside world to think that they're doing great and that's pride. Instead of saying, you know something, I don't care what the outside world thinks. Shoot, for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and get to my freedom. I don't need all this crap. I don't need all this crap. I don't need all these payments because I know if I miss a couple paychecks, I'm going to have to give it all up anyways because I, I ain't got no emergency fund, right? I, I, I ain't got no rainy day fund. Matter of fact, I, I barely got any money in my retirement savings. And this ain't, this ain't something I'm just making up, guys. Go look at the statistics. Pull up the statistics. 100, 100 million Americans don't have no retirement savings. 61% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And that's mostly middle class folks, right? That's mostly middle class folks, middle class and poor folks. So this is, this is documented stuff, man. What I'm telling you is, is real. It's pride. Pride is going to keep them broken poor. Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses, middle class folks. Every dollar you spend to make somebody else wealthy, to make you look good, to make you look successful, that's one less dollar you're putting in assets to get to real wealth and freedom. Stop being prideful. Put your pride aside. Exchange out that, 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 that pride behavior. Exchange that out and put in discipline, put in consistency, and put in some patience. You'll change your life. And then the last one, which is greed, that typically, typically associate with someone that's, 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 that's wealthy or rich. And, 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 the, and, the, and the rub here is if you put money first, you're going to be lonely, you're going to be sad, and you're going to have a miserable life. I don't care how much money you got. It ain't going to make you happy. So don't put money first. Right? Don't put money before your family. Don't put money before what you believe in. Don't compromise your integrity. Don't compromise you as a person, as a human being. For money, money is nothing but a tool. That's it. I have no use for money unless, unless I can get more time, more freedom, and more choices in my life. That's all I need from money. I don't need money to impress people. I don't need things to impress people. What I need is more time, more freedom, and more choices in my life to fulfill the destiny that I was put here to fulfill. So I wasn't put here on this earth to work for somebody for the rest of my life. I wasn't put here for that. I was put here to excel. I was put here for a purpose. 
But sometimes we can't fulfill that purpose because we've made the wrong financial choices and we're forced to work for somebody for the rest of our life. And we never have time. We never really truly get the opportunity to fulfill our purpose while we were really put here. I'm telling you, the only way you fulfill that purpose of why you were put here is you got to have freedom. You don't get freedom when you're prideful. You don't get freedom when you're fearful. And even if you get freedom and you're greedy, you'll never enjoy it. You'll never be happy. So, so, so leave those three aside. And like I said, adapt three new ones. Discipline, patience, consistency. Adapt those three behaviors. And I guarantee you, you put action behind them, nothing will stop you, man. Nothing can stop you in this world. Nothing can stop you. Give me a person who makes 50 grand a year with those three things that I just mentioned, discipline, consistency, patience. Give me somebody that makes $50,000 a year and I guarantee you in 15 years, they'll be a millionaire on that $50,000 a year. But they gotta have these three things. Give me somebody that makes $500,000 a year and they're prideful, they're fearful, and they're greedy, in 15 years, I guarantee you, they will be unhappy. They might even be in a position where they are broke. Give me that $50,000 a year person that's hungry and that's willing to change something in their financial life, that's willing to adopt financial behaviors that are helpful, not harmful. Give me that person. You see, that person right there, even though they fall down, they're going to get back up. Why? Because they, 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 freedom. They're looking at freedom. They know if they don't change something in their financial life, they're going to be working for somebody for the rest of their life. And for them, that's all they need to know. There's no fear or pride or greed big enough to keep them where they're at. Give me that person all day long. I was that person. I was that person, 30K a year, but now I'm free. Ain't that something, mama? Ain't that something? Ain't that something, mama? Said I wasn't gonna be anything. When I was in the fourth grade, my teacher tried to put me on drugs. She tried to put me on all kinds of stuff. Said, told my mom I was disruptive. I was doing all this crazy stuff in class. Fourth grade. But guess what? I ain't let that stop me. Mm -mm. Got this right. Once I got that right, there wasn't no stopping me. Nobody was going to stop me. And I just went ahead and did what I had to do. And I know my mom, if she was here, would be proud. She would be, she would be excited for me. Right? She would be. She would say, son, you did good. And for me, man, that's all I've been chasing. I've been chasing that freedom. Because I know once I got to that freedom, it was going to be job well done. I want more of you guys to get to freedom. I want more of you guys to get to freedom. But you got to make some changes in your life, guys. You really have to make some changes in your life. Your financial life. Probably your life in general. And I know a lot of you are afraid. I know a lot of you guys don't know much about the stock market. I know a lot of you guys don't know much about buying real estate for income. I know a lot of you guys don't know anything about starting a business. All I can encourage you to do, guys, is go onto the YouTube channel and, 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 and look through the thousand videos I got on there. There's something for everybody, but it's all geared towards freedom. Go on the YouTube channel and, and, and look for some content that may make sense for you. And then when you look at that content, 
pick out a couple of things that, that you believe you can execute and then go execute them. You don't need nobody holding your hand. You don't need nobody giving you step by step. No, you get the general idea and you just dive in and you learn as you go. We learn as we do, guys, right? We learn as we do. That old saying, you know, when you're trying to teach your kids something, right? See, they don't listen to what you say. They do what you do. Same thing building wealth, right? Go find people out there who have already done what you're trying to do. Put them in your gang of five. And this ain't got to be people you know. This ain't got to be people that you, you, you physically see every day. This can be people online. But just go find people who are where you want to be and that are willing to motivate you. They, they, you know what I mean? You, you got to watch their content. And, be, and, and, and find something in that content that you can grab a hold to and then you got to go execute it. But unless we do those things, we're never going to get to where we need to get to. We got to get ourselves the freedom. That's the only way you, can, you, you truly control your time. And you, and, and you control your financial destiny. You got to get the freedom. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all tapping in. I'm going to wind this thing up. If you're coming in the live late, guys, hit that thumbs up for me. I would really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up. Please, please hit the thumbs up for me before you tap out of here, please. Also, think about what I just said about these three financial classes of people. Think about it. Have a long conversation with yourself. And then, and then, and then... Figure out where you fall in that financial class category. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be afraid of. Right? You just have to identify it and then come up with a plan. And like I said, lean on my YouTube channel. Or if you want, you can certainly send me an email. Go to my, dis my description box of the video. I got an email in there for RF Financial Consulting. Now, that's my company, though. That's not a... I mean, that's a, a company that generates revenue. So I, 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 don't, I can't have one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks unless they're willing to invest in themselves, make a financial commitment to themselves, pay for my hour service, and then you can talk with me one-on-one -on -one for an hour. And we can talk through your financial situation. We can talk through what financial class you're in right now and where you want to go. And, and, and more importantly, how to get there. And then you can take that information and act on it. So if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one financial session with me, there's an email address in the description box of this video. My company's name is RF Financial Consulting. That's the only way you can contact me. There is nothing on the internet. There is no phone number. There's none of that stuff. You can contact me through that email address and say, Richard, I want to hire you to, to, to talk with me one-on-one -on -one so that I can share with you where I'm at and, and more importantly, share with you where I want to go. Now, in that hour conversation, guys, we're not going to focus on excuses. We only focus on solutions. We ain't going to focus on no excuses. I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is here's where I'm at, Richard. Here's where I want to go. I recommend you spend some time thinking about what does financial freedom mean to you before you pay your money and sign up on a call with me. I would recommend you think about your freedom. What does that mean to you? What does it look like? How much money will it take to be able to pay for that freedom? And that's lifestyle, right? So I would recommend you spend some time and think about that before you email me, right? But I guarantee you this. If you do decide to email me and, and, and spend your money and invest it in you to have an hour-long conversation with me, I guarantee you, you will have a plan. Now, it ain't going to be a plan that I'm finna write down for you and, and, and email to you and where you just sit there and do nothing. No, 
the plan is going to be verbally communicated to you, and that's up to you to write it down. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. we got to change something. We, in this culture, in, in America, we, 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 we've gotten to the place where we want everything spoon-fed to us. If it ain't spoon-fed to us, we don't want to have nothing to do with it. Because, and all that means is we don't want to do no work. We want to put our success on someone else's shoulders. Uh-uh. I paid for my hour session. That's up to you to make sure I'm successful. No, it's not. No, it's not. Nobody, nobody was responsible for my success. Me. I did it. I took the actions. I made the mistakes. I learned from the mistakes. I sacrificed. I went without. I delayed gratification. But guess what? I'm at my freedom. So it was all worth it. All I'm telling you is change something in your life. And if you want to change it, I would recommend consider getting that one hour financial coaching session with me. Just you and I one on one. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things, guys. And if you don't do it, no big deal. But that's for someone who says, you know something, I'm ready to make a financial commitment in me. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm link up with this guy. I'm going to give him what my situation is. I'm going to tell him where I want to end up at. And then he's going to help me put a plan together to get there that then I'm going to take and implement. That's the deal. So if you want to be a part of that, email address down in the description box for RF Financial Consulting or hit me on Instagram through DM. You can DM me on Instagram at richardfain 28 We can chop it up. Again, I don't do no pre-calls. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time emailing back and forth. Guys, that's not what I do. You got to understand, I get hundreds of emails every single day between DMs and, 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 uh, DMs and, and, and direct emails, at least 100 a day. I'm just not, I can't, I can't sit on and have an email conversation with every single 100 of those people. I, I don't physically don't have the time, right? So, so, so you have to figure out what you want to get accomplished. Let me know that. Sign up for the session and then boom, we're off to the races. Also, hit that thumbs up button for me before we tap out. I, a lot of you already have. I really appreciate it. I also appreciate all the, the super uh, chats. I know several of you guys through, sent through some super chats, but when I'm in these, I'm doing these types of live streams, I don't really even be looking at the screen that much. I just be focused on what I'm, the content I'm trying to get out. So I want to appreciate the people who did hit me with super chats. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Again, hit that thumbs up before you get out of here, guys. Hit that thumbs up if you're in the video portion. Uh, when it turns into a video, hit that thumbs up. Very important. Also, share the content. Share this video with somebody in your network, somebody who you may know, somebody you may go to church with or you see at church that you feel like eh, that person right there might be struggling a little bit financially. And even if you don't believe they're struggling financially, send it to them anyways. Share the video. That means a lot to me. It will get more eyeballs on the content. And guess what? We may be able to help more people. That's the key, right? We want to help people. So if we can do that, if you can share for me, I really, I really would appreciate it. And also, last thing is that Weeble offer up to 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account. That link is down in the description box of the video as well. Click on that Weeble link, open up your new Weeble account, uh, fund it with any amount of money. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks for trying out the brokerage app. And then I'm going to send you a Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to trade, right? To make your first trade. And when I say trade, guys, I'm not talking about day trade. I'm just showing you how to go through and buy an investment like an ETF or an individual stock. I'm, I'm showing you step by step how to do that. Because once you buy it, you know how to buy the rest of them, right? So send me a DM on Instagram at richardfain 28 Let me know you opened that Weeble account, you funded it, and then I'm going to go ahead and send you uh, that free Weeble tutorial video. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you. You guys know I get so much uh, satisfaction out doing these videos. So thank you all for hanging in there, for tapping in. I really appreciate it. Um, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next live stream or the next video. Peace.